Welcome friends, welcome back to the kitchen. Welcome back to Sunday Morning and the Old Cookbook Show. Today we're going to do a recipe out of a book, um, probably one of the most seriously worded cookbooks in my collection. Um, and this was sent in by a viewer. It's called Hints to Housewives. It was published in June of 1917 um, by a department of the city of New York. And it's meant to address um, food shortages or food scarcity, and not necessarily uh, shortages that you couldn't get it, but it's meant to address those people who are on the deepest margins of, of poverty, and that there was a worldwide global conflict happening in Europe, World War I, that the United States hadn't yet entered. But it was affecting the global uh, food supply. And so if you were on the margins um, of poverty or in poverty in the inner city of New York, uh, it was affecting you already and you were having difficulty finding food. And so this booklet really works towards addressing that. Um, and it's, it's quite serious in its tone. And so today we're going to make a carrot soup out of this book. Uh, in this double boiler, I already have some milk and some rice going, and we're going to cook that in a double boiler. In this pot, I've put some water, and I've got some chopped carrots, and we're supposed to boil those until they're soft as well. Now, I'm going to say these carrots are done, so I'm going to strain out the liquid, and then I'm supposed to force the carrots through a wire mesh strainer into the pot. This is going to be a smooth soup, and Forcing through a wire mesh strainer takes a bit of time, a little bit of patience. The carrots are going to have to be, you know, really soft to make it through. If you wanted to use an immersion blender, go right ahead. Or if you want to use a countertop blender, go right ahead. This is just what they would have done before they had those things or if they couldn't afford them. Okay, now we're coming together. So I've got the carrot strained through. I'm going to keep the strainer because I'm going to need it in a little bit. Next up, I'm supposed to fry this onion in some butter or drippings. So I've got drippings. I save my bacon drippings. Always do. Always have. Um, I would suggest that you do too if you, if you can. It makes a great cooking fat. So I've got about two tablespoons of drippings. Maybe. And I'm going to put these onions in and get them frying up. Okay, now the onions are cooking. They're swimming in that fat. I've got some flour, same amount of flour as fat. And we're going to make a roux. I'm also supposed to add the seasonings at this point, which is some salt and a few grains of cayenne. And so not much in the way of seasoning at all. Now, I'm going to set this pan aside for a moment. I'm going to bring the pan back that has the carrots in it, and I'm supposed to pour in the milk and rice. So we pour the rice and the milk in. And combine that together. And this is where I add the onion fat and flour, or the onion in the roux. Continue mixing. And I also add in the reserved water that we cooked the carrots in. Hey Jules. Hi Glenn. Hi friends. Soup. A carrot soup. The last instruction, or the last two instructions, were to strain it, and I guess that's to get out the bits of rice. And the final instruction was, if it seems too thick, to thin it out with some milk. So I actually thinned it out with water. Um, and you clearly didn't strain it. And I didn't strain it. So I added about an extra cup of water, and that discrepancy could be down to how much I boiled the carrots, and mm -hmm. how much water I boiled away when I was boiling the carrots. And I left, the, I left the rice in. I thought, why am I straining out the rice? These are good questions. Um, if you don't like lumpy rice in it, put in a stick blender, take care of it. 
So that's super creamy. Super creamy. It could use a little bit more flavor to it. Like I would add some... There's no... I don't get any carrot flavor. I get a little bit of carrot color, but I don't get any carrot flavor. It's a little carrot flavor. It could use some additional herbs or something yes, in it. Yes, definitely. So the only seasoning were a few grains of cayenne and some salt. Pepper, everything else could have gone into this. Definitely. Uh, rosemary. Yeah. Thyme. Yeah. The point of this book, though, it's addressing food shortages in New York in 1917. And so that might be something you don't have a lot of. So these of. were very basic, bare-bones recipes that I imagine any, and I'm going to say housewives because that's what it's called. The title of the book, yes. That housewives living in that situation in New York in this time period they would have just added what they had on the shelf anyway, and this, this would have just been a jumping off point to make the recipe the way that they could have made it in their house. I really like the texture though. I like I it's don't. a lovely creamy yeah. texture and the rice really adds mm -hmm. to it. So uh, it's a great base to start with. You could probably even throw in some celery. Yeah. It's like any soup, right? You just, you figure it out and then you just add more vegetables just that add you whatever, like. Whatever you like. And, <laughs> the, and, the, and so the, 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 the rice is boiled in the milk, which is giving it that really nice creamy texture. Okay, so a slice of history, 1917, um, could do with a little work to bring it up to 2021. Fair thanks, enough. Thanks for stopping by. See you again soon.